Welcome to the Blade of Tech Channel's 58th edition, second year, the Space and Tech Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of July 19th through July 25th in space exploration, science, and technology. July 19th, 1843, the world's first all-metal liner powered by a screw propeller, the SS Great Britain, was launched from Bristol, England on this date. With a 322-foot overall length, it was the biggest ship of the time. The six-masted 3,270-ton vessel was designed by Isambard Brunel. It became the world's first iron-hulled steamship to cross the Atlantic in 1845. Its crew of 130 included 30 stewards for the 360-seat dining room. As a luxury liner, it carried passengers to New York and Melbourne. Later, it became a ferry carrying troops to the Crimea and India, and then a cargo ship, and then finally moored in the Falkland Islands as a hulk, following storm damage in 1886. The ship was scuttled in 1937. Thirty years later, the ship was raised by restorers, and on this day in 1970, the Great Britain was towed back to Bristol's Great Western Dock, where it was originally built, to be fully rebuilt as a museum ship. July 20th, 1995. Inventure Place, the original home of the U.S. National Inventors Hall of Fame, is dedicated in Akron, Ohio, on this date. The National Inventors Hall of Fame itself was established in 1973 by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and what is now the National Council of Intellectual Property Law Associations. The Board of Trustees of the Hall had decided in 1987 to relocate from its temporary location at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office building near Reagan National Airport to Akron. From the beginning, the Adventure Place was intended to be more than a science and technology museum and library. It was designed to double as an inventor's workshop and a national resource center for creativity. Designed by an architect from New York City, James Stewart Polshik, it was a stainless steel building shaped like curving row of white sails with five tiers of exhibits but attendance did not meet the expectations and the museum never made a profit. In 2008, the hall moved to Alexandria, Virginia. Its Akron facility was converted to a specialty school for students in grades between fifth and eighth. It is now the National Inventors Hall of Fame STEM Middle School, a middle school for the Akron Public School District. July 21st, 1904. After 13 years of work, the initial track of the 4,607 mile Trans-Siberian Railway was completed on this date. The railway linked European Russia with the Pacific coast. Its construction was begun in 1891 on the initiative of Count Sergei Vit, a confidant of the Tsars who eventually became Russia's first prime minister. As of 2021, the Trans-Siberian is the longest railway in the world at 5,772 miles, starting from the capital, Moscow, and ending at Vladivostok on the Pacific Ocean. The entire length of the two main routes of the Trans-Siberian lies within the Russian Federation. The Trans-Siberian has been both a blessing and a curse in Russian history. Construction of the line significantly improved commerce and communications in the empire, but also increased the east-to-west migration of peasants that eventually led to a sharp growth of the proletariat in the European portion of the country. This created the conditions necessary for the overthrow of the Tsar, the collapse of the empire, and the takeover of its remnants by the communists for the next 80 years. The initial single track of the Trans-Siberian limited the empire's response to the 1904-1905 Russo-Japanese War, leading to Russia's defeat, and the domestic strategic importance of the line lengthened the Russian Civil War of 1918-1923, giving the White Army a significant advantage over the Red Army in logistics and mobility until the counter-revolutionaries' eventual disintegration in the face of unpopularity among Russian citizens. However, during World War II, the Trans-Siberian was a crucial supply link for the Soviet forces fighting the Axis armies, and it was later an important logistical line for the Soviet Union. In the 21st century, the Trans-Siberian continues its role as an important domestic artery, and is a cargo transshipment option for Japan, Korea, and China. July 
July 22, 1933, pioneering aviator Wiley Post successfully completed the first solo circumnavigation of the Northern Hemisphere by single-engine monoplane on this date. Post won initial fame by previously flying a similar route in 1931 with navigator Harold Gaddy in 8 days and 16 hours. His solo flight in 1933 beat his previous mark with a trip time of 7 days and 19 hours. The flight included 11 stops for fuel, supplies, and various repairs, and began and ended at Floyd Bennett Field in Brooklyn, New York. Bennett Field no longer hosts manned fixed-wing aircraft, but is a New York Police Department helicopter base. Post was tragically killed with popular actor and newspaper columnist Will Rogers in an airplane crash near Point Barrow, Alaska in 1935. The Lockheed Orion he was flying had been modified to give it more range, but also made it excessively nose-heavy. Lockheed had pointedly warned against making Post's upgrades, but the experienced flyer waved off their concerns. Sure enough, mid-trip during its inaugural flight, the engine failed during a takeoff, and Lockheed's worst fears were realized. The sudden loss of thrust had the plane flip end-on-end, end, and both Post and Rogers died instantly. July 23, 1985, Commodore introduces its Amiga personal computer, also known as the Amiga 1000 or A1000, on this date. The computer featured a multitasking windowed operating system, color graphics, and stereo sound among other features ahead of its time. The Amiga developed a loyal user following that remained strong even as the PC market became increasingly consolidated between the dominant IBM-compatible PCs and Apple Macintosh computers. In 1994, Byte Magazine would write, quote, The Amiga was so far ahead of its time that almost nobody, including Commodore's marketing department, could fully articulate what it was all about. Today, it's obvious the Amiga was the first multimedia computer, but in those days, it was derided as a game machine because few people grasped the importance of advanced graphics, sound, and video. July 24, 1950. The first successful rocket launch occurs at Cape Canaveral on this date. The rocket, Bumper 8, was a captured German V-2 modified with a U.S. Army Corporal second stage. This part of Florida would later host the Kennedy Space Center and the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Cape Canaveral's location in the southeast is an ideal site for rocket launches in the United States. By launching eastward, rockets are able to take advantage of the linear velocity of the Earth's rotation. This velocity is greatest towards the equator, making the southern United States preferable. And by launching towards the ocean, away from populated areas, safety downrange from the launch is maximized in case of problems. It is this same logic that dictated SpaceX's selection of Boca Chica, Texas for its Starship development site and future launch complex. We've covered all of SpaceX's launch facilities and facility locations in episode 26. July 25th, 1984. Soviet cosmonaut Svetlana Savitskaya began her second trip into space on this date, during which she became the first woman to perform a spacewalk. Savitskaya carried out over three hours of experiments outside the orbiting space station, Salyut 7. She was selected in 1980 to be a cosmonaut as part of a female team selected to upstage pending female astronaut flights on NASA's space shuttle. Savitskaya became the second woman in space in 1982. It was seven months later that Sally Ride became the first American female astronaut in space on the shuttle Challenger on STS-7. Ride returned to space a second time as part of the STS-41G mission in 1984. Ride died on July 23, 2012, from pancreatic cancer. Like fellow cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova, Savitskaya is currently a member of the Russian Federation State Duma, the country's lower legislative body. Before we get to the current event of the week, we wanted to see if you enjoyed this 58th episode of Bladed Tech's The Space and Tech Rewind. If so, click that like button. 
Did you agree with our choices, or are there other events that were better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. And if you have suggestions for an event in the future, we'll take those too. We'll credit events we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not yet taken the opportunity as of yet to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. On June 29th, 2021, Barty Global invested an extra $500 million to take the largest stake in broadband satellite internet provider OneWeb. In April, French satellite operator Eutelsat had paid $550 million for what would have given it a 24% stake in OneWeb. However, Barty had a call option to increase its holding, which it exercised. That gives the Indian group 38.6% of the company. The UK government, Eutelsat, and SoftBank will each own 19.3%. If Eutelsat and Barty's latest investments get regulatory clearances later this year. Barty's investment means OneWeb has secured the $2.4 billion it needs for deploying 648 satellites by 2022, providing connectivity to enterprise, government, maritime, and aviation customers. The company recently expanded its satellite network as it prepares to start partial services this year to the United Kingdom, Alaska, Northern Europe, Greenland, Iceland, the Arctic Seas, and Canada. We have covered OneWeb previously in episode 27, episode 36, and Milestones 76. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 250 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos on our microblogging accounts, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation Documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered in the Bladed Tech Gaming channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed and Minds page, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed, and where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.